This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. So I have a paintbrush not moving. Oh, there's is moving. Dip the paintbrush in the paint. Ooh. Do this. Use a conditional. That means if statement. Use an if statement to send the paintbrush down. If the down arrow is pressed. Okay. Hint a different conditional to send the paintbrush up if it reaches the palette. Oh, hint. You need to check your Y property. All right, so what they're saying there is it should only go down when we hit down, but it has to go up automatically when it hits the palette. So let's start with the, well, it's not even going down yet. So how do we make something go down? It's what we've been doing this whole time. We're going to be using velocity and we would use Y, All right? Keep in mind, I'm going to show the grid. Y is zero is way up here. Y 400 is way down there. To make something go down, that means I have to add to the Y value. So I would need a positive velocity because sprite.velocity Y is just like having in the draw loop sprite.y equals sprite.y plus six or something like that. It's the speed at which it's moving. We just get to put it outside and keep it one speed. So I'm going to say brush.velocity Y is four maybe. And let's make sure I'm dropping the paintbrush. Great. That looks like a good speed to me. And now we don't want it to fall forever. We need it to go back up. When is it going back up? Well, if something occurs. So let me find my if statement and I'm going to put this in the draw loop. This has to be in the draw loop because the draw loop runs 30 times a second. This code only runs once technically, right? Brush.velocity y is set once. So we tell it it's equal to four and the draw loop just keeps pushing it for it knows that it's equal to four but the computer processes this part of the code once, this code 30 times a second, and we need to check 30 times a second if it's down here because we want it to respond immediately by going back up. All right, now, oh, I have an empty if statement, that's why. All right, let's use math, and I'm gonna know, I know I'm gonna need the greater than because y is 400 down here, so I wanna know if the brush is greater than something. So let's do sprite dot y. Okay, and I actually might do sprite.y again, because what I'm going to try, I saw they have palette up here. So instead of like figuring out, and I could, maybe the palette has a 350 for y, but I'm going to do, if the brush's y value is greater than the, did they just name it palette? Yep, palette, I'm going to just copy and paste because I'm lazy. Palette's y value, right? That means it's past it or it's at it. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to change its velocity. So sprite velocity. And this is when I would need it to be negative. So brushes velocity is going to be negative uh, four. Sure. All right. So now it will be negative. Keep in mind, use a conditional, send the brush down if the arrow is pressed. So now I need to fix this. We already got our Y velocity up here, but it shouldn't move automatically. That's going to be on condition too. Good to know that part works. So this is on a condition as well. So again, I'll need an if statement. I only want it to move if something occurs. What occurs? Mm, down arrow. So world. If I'm going to use both of these to show you the difference, but I'm going to use if key went down, velocity is negative four or is positive four, which pushes it down. So let's check this out. Down arrow. And bounces back up. So I could hit down again and it will eventually reappear. Let's see the difference though. I have key went down, key down. Ah. So this was kind of a trap because as of right now, there's no difference between these two. They will both work. But uh, let's see where there's bounces. Do they go? Oh, they go to our same point. We did it. Tricky, tricky stuff. If statements and conditionals are always tricky, but we can do some powerful things with them. Onward.